All right, damn right I got knives here with another knife review. Yep, it's that time again. This time I got two of these boxes here. I'll explain that in a bit. Um, yeah, listening to the Handsome Furs here. My wife got me this record because I was always playing it in the car while we were driving. And I didn't ever had the vinyl. Um, and it was an awesome gift. Let's take a look. It'd be really cool if it was red vinyl, but it's black vinyl, which is totally fine with me. I really like this record. Great singing, great songs, all kinds of stuff going on. Face Control is the name of the record. Recorded between 2007 and 2009. Released March 10th, 2009. It's on Sub Pop Records here. Cool picture of a dog. Sub Pop Records. The album was heavily influenced by the Handsome Furs travels throughout Eastern Europe. I really like this song here. I like a lot of the songs on here. I don't know if there's a song I don't like. I just really enjoy this record. All right, let's set this aside here and move on. All right, I'm drinking this. June Shine Hopical Citrus. It's actually really good. It's like, uh, again, it's kind of like a Rattler would be into me when I drink it. It's light, it's summery, it's easy to drink. It has a higher alcohol than the Rattlers that I drink. Yeah, the alcohol on this is 6% alcohol. Hopical citrus. It's made with some simple ingredients. It says grapefruit, organic hops, citrus zest, green tea, honey, and cane sugar, and June kombucha. You know, drinking this, it's kind of a, a clever combination of flavors going on here. I'm, I'm tasting uh, some sort of cascade and organic feeling of like hops and fresh fruit. Citrus is very forward. It's a very forward citrus taste. But yet it's pretty laid back. I definitely would return to this another time for sure. Kombucha with a, a higher alcohol content. This is made in San Diego. I've been to their place here in San Diego and have sat in their brewery and have had some drinks. Now you can get it at any grocery store here. Their business has really taken off. And then I approve of that. It's good stuff. Paradise is calling you. Got to do some cheesy stuff every now and then. That's what they say on here. They say Paradise Called. June Shine started with a team of adventurers, artists, and creatives who shared a passion to leave a positive impact on the environment. Wondering why people cared so much about the food they ate, why they weren't caring more about the alcohol they drink. It's kind of a good little motto there they got going. It's good stuff. I still like my Rattlers more, I got to be honest. To be honest, now that I'm drinking this, when I first take a sip of it, I don't like the smell. If I inhale right as I drink, it has kind of a funky little thing going on. But then it's good once once you get past that. So I guess try not to smell it as you're drinking maybe. It's good. Maybe I'm being a little too picky, but that, that's just the sudden feeling I got as I was drinking this. I hadn't had this exact one before. Had some of their other, their ginger ones. But I don't think I've had this hopical citrus. Maybe I'm smelling the hops a little bit and then tasting the citrus or something, but it is good. I do like it. I'm going to pour myself some more right now. All right, let's put this aside and move on to the main attraction. I got two boxes here. This is kind of cool, you know? Got these in the mail. I got one before the other. I got this smaller one first. And then I had to wait like three days to get this because I ordered them both from Amazon. I don't know why I ordered these from Amazon when I could have got them from other places. I think I was looking at something, I clicked on some links and they were so cheap, it was just a quick decision. Let's just get into it. I'm gonna open these both simultaneously um, and then I'll talk about them a little more. All right. Box out of here and 
here's this one. Get into this. Show you what these are. So much plastic. All right. These, I got two of them because they were so dang cheap. I think they were like 30 something bucks for both. Kind of got turned on by the functionality, the opening and the deployment of these knives. They just looked so cool and they were so cheap and I thought, yeah, get these, check them out. I like this cardboard box that they come in. I can kind of picture them just being nice and cheap, hanging in a nice hardware store in New Zealand somewhere. Made in New Zealand, the peasant knife by Zvord International. The box is cool, it's simple. That plastic that it came in was kind of weird, but then look at this. Peasant knife, available only to first class peasants. Are you good enough? And it's a cool little picture of this guy there sitting on a knife, holding a knife, cutting some cheese it looks like. It's bigger here. Cool packaging. I kind of like that. It's just different, you know. I like that. You like that they left the hole here that you can see what the knife is, the color that you're choosing. Let's go ahead and open the set and get into these. So obviously these are two different sizes. There's that one and there's the bigger one here. Let's see what this says in here. Ugh. Okay. Peasant knife. Available only to first class peasants. Are you good enough? Not just any old knife. It's just telling you a bit about the knife. I'm gonna read this later. I'm not gonna put you through it, but that's cool. Product warranty, yeah. So I'll set these off to the side and we'll get into the knife. So what's cool about this is, well, first of all, let's look at this. Made in New Zealand, it says right here on this one. Doesn't on this one. That's interesting. Um, they got these big flathead screws going in. They're completely at different levels. This one's poking out a little, this one's that. I'm imagining the fit and finish to these is not gonna be that great for the price, but I'm expecting that they're probably really durable is what I'm thinking. So, and this one looks horribly dirty. Um, we'll see if that's this grease or what when we get into it. Let's, let's try the small one first. The handle material is a polypropylene, you know, just a plastic like stuff. Kind of slippery feeling. It's not like G10 at all or micarta. It's not slippery, but it's not super grippy either. But it doesn't feel like it's gonna slip out of my hand or anything. What I like about these, first of all, this sits in your pocket and you can just pull this out. You can just grab onto it. Really easy, you could put it, I suppose, hang it on a bench, you know, hang it from a nail. You know, you could do it on a keychain, but that would just be way in the way. One-handed deploy, which is cool. And you open it like that. And then closes in there. And when you hold your hand over it, that keeps it shut. The blade kind of still moves there, but it's not gonna without this poking through your hand and your hand won't let that happen. It's not a lock locking knife but it's you know if you're cutting this way that's not going anywhere you're going to cut some rope or cut something if you were to bang it here it would just bang into your hand i really like how this blade is done it's really dirty and not finished here and then polished here i just really liked these i saw one video on them and i just was like that is cool i mean just a cheap little knife to throw around they did come pretty dirty though. Let's see what this one is. Here's the bigger one. This thing's bigger than I thought. Wow, look at that. That thing is big. I mean, it's cool how they're kind of just <laughs> really kind of messed up. Says New Zealand's Ward right there. This one says just Zord there, and then made in New Zealand on the handle. So this one has the full deal. And this one just says the name there. But if you look at this, there's like scratches, and, and I don't know if you can see these scratches on the shiny part too. Can you see that? I mean, left and right blade play, there's really none. I mean, up and down there's gonna be because this thing just moves. But there they are. Let me tell you a little about them here. The mini blade is 2.5 and the larger one is three. Well, let's get out the tape measure. They say 5.5. Hmm, that must be the larger one. Their overall length is 6.75. 
that looks about right there. The handle seems to be about four, 8.25, that looks right, eight and a quarter. The blade material is a Sandvik 12C27 stainless steel, carbon steel on these blades. Handle material, a white Zettel is what this is. And then I guess with the black one, it's a polypropylene. It's just, you know, it looks like an old knife that your grandpa would have around in his workshop. And you'd be like, what kind of knife is that? that? Why is it like that? And that is why right there, just one handed, you're working with something and you can just open them like that, you know? So if you're working, you're holding something, you need it, you just do that and you can cut. Um, you can close it with one hand too. I think the big one's probably gonna be a little harder to close with one hand. It feels like it is, but yeah, you can still do it. Get your fingers out of the way and then... Those are cool. They're like, they look like little chili peppers in a way, you know? I really like those. Those are great. All right, let's see how sharp these are. Let's start with this one. And it could be sharp and a little. Let's try this guy. This one seems sharper. Yeah. I mean, for the price, I don't, I'm not like expecting these to be real sharp. All right. We kind of got that. So they feel good in your hand, you know? That thing kind of, you can feel it up against your hand, but it's not that big of a deal. If you're just doing something, you kind of, it's not gonna bug you at all. Practicality and function. I would probably throw this in my truck and leave it in there or in my shop out back and be able to just have this as an extra knife if I needed one for some reason. The lock type, there's none. It's your hand, that's the lock type. It's a hand lock. The deploy is, is fun. It's kind of cool to just do that. There's no pocket clip. I think the thought there is that this is kind of in your pocket, resting up against, and you can just reach in and grab that. Um, let's see, look at the centering. I mean, how they do this is they make these grips so dang tight that that is just, there's no room for blade play. And this comes around and kind of, you can even see where it's already leaving a mark, but it pushes down into there and kind of sticks down in there and that's i think the concept behind it you know this one too sandwich the blade is like sandwiched in there there's no relief on either side of it really it just goes right down into that little slot I suppose if you bend the blade it's gonna be tricky to get back in there this is definitely not a fast deployment it's more of a slow chill and just hanging need a knife so, all right, yeah, let's look at these up against some other knives real quick. Let's look at this big boy up against my paramilitary. I mean, they're almost the same size. That's really close. How about the Protect Malibu it's for the small one? Microtech UTX-85, a bug out. Um, let's look at the uh, Benchmade Tango Flipper. And just because I just reviewed this one, I'll look at the Launch 4, the Kershaw. And I think I like seeing these ones kind of next to it. Kind of gives you an idea. Let's look at this bug out close to this guy. Well, let's put these away. All right, there we have it. Damn right, I got knives. See you next time. The Zvord Peasant.